Action Sports 5 presents... Atlantic Coast Conference Basketball. From Cameron Indoor Stadium in Durham, it's the Tar Heels of North Carolina versus the Blue Devils of Duke. Tonight's telecast is brought to you by the Pilot Life Insurance Company and your local pilot representative. Pilot, the company that helps you through life. And by Hardee's. Hardee's, best eaten in town, up and down and all around. By Pabst Blue Ribbon. Pabst is brewed to be the best naturally, with no artificial ingredients, and you can taste it. By Toyota. You asked for it, you got it. Toyota. By Piedmont Airlines, now serving over 90 cities and 16 states. Piedmont, making new places part of our world and yours. by NCNB, the people who know that to be the best bank in the state, you have to be the best in the neighborhood. It's a packed house here tonight. As a matter of fact, they were standing in the rain for hours to get in for this one. I'm Jim Thacker with Bones McKinney. We come down to this final game of 1979 regular season. This one's going to be for the Five Bones, the first time perhaps ever they've tied for that. And nothing could be so important, Jim, because the people can say what they want to about wanting to play all three days because they want to be ready for the second game. Malarkey. I want that bye. Well, a Duke Carolina game always generates tremendous excitement. This was no exceptions. What a special one, matter of fact because first place is on the line. North Carolina has a one game lead. Duke by winning here tonight can force a tie. The Tar Heels can win the bye outright with a victory. So that's what we have going the line going into this one. We've had a full day of activity in the ACC and we'll be telling you about that a little bit later. But here tonight in Durham it's a special uh, evening and right now uh, the president of Duke University Mr. Terry Sanford is coming out to midcourt and he'll be signing a contract to build a $13 million plus new student union for Duke University. So that's the announcement that's been being made here to this capacity crowd in uh, Durham tonight. And you can hear the applause right now in the background as president of Duke University, Terry Sanford, prepares to sign this uh, final contract for uh, this new building. Well, Bones, uh, earlier here today, we saw State in a blowout. Well, I thought State looked very good. It was not just one of those days they were shooting well, but they passed the ball well and played great defense. I just thought they were a great basketball team this afternoon. And, you know, they've only been out of a couple of ball games this year completely. And, of course, uh, to broke a tie in the other game. Now, there's President Terry Sanford right here. And he's going to officially sign this contract for the building of a new $13 million student union. And we'll be hearing more about that. You'll be reading about it, I'm sure, tomorrow morning's paper. The other game today, won by Virginia, and a close one. What a finish that was against Maryland. I just thought it was the one that got the last basket. Jim, they matched baskets all the way down the line. It was absolutely a great basketball game, and, and Maryland looked as good as Virginia. They just wound up a little bit short. All right, uh, Jeff Lamp scored the winning basket in that one, and we'll have our scouting report of tonight's game in just a moment after this message. Doesn't anybody make a sporty car that looks like a million? But doesn't cost like a million. Toyota, what have you got? The Toyota Celica GT Sport Coupe. Your money's worth and more in a beautiful package. You got a roomy four-passenger cockpit, five speeds, full instrumentation. You got the Toyota Celica GT Sport Coupe. A beautiful value. Toyota, you got it. You asked for it. You got it, Toyota. There are lots of ways to get acid indigestion when you have a headache. Sometimes it's not what you eat, but when you eat it. Sometimes it is what you eat. 
Sometimes it's not what or when, but how much. For all those times, take Alka-Seltzer. Listen. It's the sound of fast relief. Oh, what a relief it is. <laughs> My folks have been married 25 years today. It was six months from now, no problem. But as it was, I came up a little short and had to borrow a couple hundred bucks from NCNB. You know, they really understood how I felt. I mean, my folks have been doing things for me all my life. Surprise. It's kind of nice to be able to start paying them back. Oh, can you <laughs> oh, bless you Packed house here tonight as the seniors are being introduced at Duke University. We've watched this ceremony throughout the conference this week as senior players play their final home games. Jim Spinarkle, I'm sure, is going to be getting a thunderous ovation. One of the greatest players at Duke University history as he's introduced next. Well, here they look at these two teams. Uh, first, we're going to take a look at the two coaches of this ball club. Both veterans, Bill Foster, Duke on your left, and Dean Smith on the right. I think, uh, Jim, that the thing we need to think about, both of these fellas have known adversity. Dean Smith took over a program from Frank McGuire, knew some difficult years. Now he's on top. Bill Foster has gone through the same situation. They know what it is to be down. They know what it is to be up. Well, Foster's first three teams here had trouble getting winning seasons. Matter of fact, a little below that. And last year, went all the way to the Final Four. Well, there are outstanding players on both sides here tonight. Certainly, the final game of the season is going to be an emotional one for Jim Spinarco, a Duke on your right. And he may be facing this man on the left before the evening's over. Well, he's, he's as fine a defensive basketball player that Bradley is coming in here for a layup. He's as fine as has ever been in the conference. And you know, two years ago, I wouldn't have given you two cents for his chances to be where he is today. Well, he's made a name for himself. Spinarkle, of course, could become the all-time leading scorer in Duke history. He's number two right now behind Art Heyman and has a chance to finish his career setting records in four key statistical categories. It just shows you, Jim, what you can do if you work hard because Panarco was not that great as a freshman. Uh, all right. Uh, both teams like to run and press, change up defenses, change offenses. The officials for tonight's ball game. The referee is Hank Nichols on the center. On the left is Hal Grossman. On the right, Jerry Donaghy. Three officials for this ball game. It's the final game of the season. It all comes down to this one for first place. The other spots are falling in line. Third place was taken by Virginia today. Second place team could be established here tonight. If Duke wins, it'll be a tie. We'll have to throw out of the hat at 10 o'clock tomorrow morning to break that tie. Fourth place is taken by Maryland. Fifth place by Clemson. And it's a tie for six between North Carolina State and Wake Forest. That'll be taken uh, broken by draw also tomorrow. The Holly Farm Scholarship Award, of $1,000 grant, is presented to the office of the ACC Commissioner to the school of the outstanding player of the game, as chosen by the game announcers, and he'll be picked, or they'll be picked, later tonight. That's our scouting report of tonight's game. We'll be back with the starting lineups and the opening tip-off after this message. Put out your hand, take the hand that's gonna help you make the time of your life. Hungry, Ernie? Like a bear. You know what I'm thinking about? Hardy's big cheese. Mm. Two pure beef burgers, charbroiled, with a whole lot of tangy melted mm. cheese, all hot and juicy. I must be dreaming. And I can smell that big cheese. Well, open your eyes, good buddy, and you can see it. <laughs> Bless your warm little heart. Hardy's best eaten in town, up and down and all around. hour, the new WYYD FM Stereo 96 is just as bright and beautiful as a sparkling waterfall. 
WYYD FM Stereo 96. Just beautiful music, 24 hours a day. It's a very crucial game for Duke University. I'll tell you why. They must win this game to get a tie for first place in the bye, but there's a narrow, the very good reason, too. If some team other than one of these two teams wins the ACC tournament, well, we'll get back to that later. Let's now go down for the starting lineups. Ladies and gentlemen, the starting lineups for tonight's game. First for Dean Smith's Tar Heels. At a guard, number 20, David Colescott. And for Duke at guard, number 34, Jim Spinarco. At the other guard, number 22, Dudley Bradley. And for Duke, number 21, Bob Bender. At the center, number 34 for the Tar Heels, Pete Budko. For Duke, number 43, Mike Jaminski. At the forward for the Tar Heels. Number 30, Al Wood. And for Duke, number 12, Vince Taylor. Number 31 for the Tar Heels, Mike O'Corran. And for Duke, number 33, Kenny Dunard. All right, that's Dean Smith, coach of the University of North Carolina. And Bill Foster is the head coach of Duke University. Folks, we're going to assume now that Gene Banks is still suffering a little bit from his injury. I would have to think so, Jim, because he'd be starting this ball game. There's no tomorrow here. There's the lineup for North Carolina. And the lineup for Duke, you'll note, does not include Gene Banks, a high scoring and high rebounding forward. I'm surprised that he's starting Pete. Uh, Budco, you're noticing the Duke lineup here. You see at the top, Vince Taylor starting in the place of Gene Banks. I would think Budco wouldn't start. I would think Jaminski could get the jump ball, and the tempo of this ball game may be well decided in the first two or three minutes. I guess Ben Moore on a trim that North Carolina's been in starting Budco, and then immediately off the bench, they bring Yannick around the lineup. But if Duke gets that ball, you can believe they're going to Jaminski as soon as they can because Budco will be guarding him. All right, here we go. Center court, Budko, number 34 in the blue. Zemeski, number 43 in the white for Duke. Duke needing a win here to get a tie for first place. We'll get into that explanation more in a moment. An idea of why it's very crucial for Duke. Tip control by Duke. Here they come. Okay, Bones, we'll see if they look for Zemeski. There they go. Zemeski baseline. Dusty Bradley went out of bounds, but knock it away. They knew it was going in there, and now they're going to be able to get Bud go out. And there goes Yonaker. A little okay. patience. First dead ball, Yonaker has come in. Bud go was in just for the start. Lob it inside his Spinarco. Zone defense here off the inbound play. Doesn't mean that North Carolina's going to be playing for most of the time. They're going to look for some lob passes tonight, Jim, with some dunk going behind it, especially with Spinarco and with Banks when he does get in there. Good yep. being very patient against the zone here, Bones, at the round set. Well, they're going to get a good one. There goes uh, Javinsky. Rebound by Vince Taylor inside. Good move by Taylor. That's what quickness will do for you. He made a beautiful play. They were a little slow. North Carolina was a little slow in reaction. North Carolina. I think they're going to hold it, Bones. They were going to go in the stall from the outset. Now, they can't really hold it out here. No, they cannot the hold line. the ball. They cannot hold it, but if they go beyond, beyond that hash mark, they're perfectly all right. North Carolina going into its spread attack here at the outset, and I think that tips off what their game plan was. I, I think it was. I think they wanted to get out in front to start with. Of course, they haven't, and I think eventually they're going to look for an easy shot, but they're going to they're going to try to throw Duke off a little bit, try to make them come out and play them a little bit. Duke's got to come further out if they're going to make any attempt out of it all, and North Carolina's not going to stay in this. They can't. Duke in his zone. Legally, Duke can stay back in his zone all at once. They do not have to force the play. And what North Carolina is doing constitutes making play. They are penetrating the little hash mark. 
Now you'll remember, Jim, if they're warned one time, they're not going to be warned as long as they're going beyond that hash mark. Right where you see Dudley Bradley have that ball. And over here where you see Yannick, uh, uh, yeah, Yannick have the ball. If they go beyond that, they're all right. If they're warned one time, that's all the warning they'll ever get. It's a technical if they have another one. What right now they're doing, they're fulfilling the rule, Bones. They are. They're, they're fulfilling it. They're, they're making past the hash mark. They are making no mistake. And if Duke tries to shut off the passes to either Yannick or to Bradley, then they're going in the middle to O'Connor, uh, you know, Corey, and, and of course Al Wood's going to go that baseline and they'll get an easy basket. North Carolina's fame for its four corner attack, as all ACC fans know. I remember a game one time, both went down like uh, 21 to 20 was the final score, but it was very close to the halftime. I remember one that was 12 to 10 for the tournament championship. Yeah, but that wasn't these two teams. I'm talking about these two teams played a game like that. It was like right. four, six to four at the half. Remember that? Happened, that? that happened in Riddles Coliseum, yeah. Duke leads 2 nothing. remember? And North Carolina's been holding the ball ever since. Uh, Duke's coming out of the zone. They switched to a 1-3-1 three, one zone. They've come out of the 2-3, and now they're trapping a little more, putting on a little more pressure. Duke's going to have to face this, Jim, the rest of their days after the Clemson was successful with them. That's where they want it, in the middle and break them in along the baseline. Of course, Duke can't afford to let the score remain 2-0 indefinitely. That's what it is, 2-0. North Carolina's held the ball now for almost three minutes. One of the places you don't like to get that ball is down in the corner now where Dudley Bradley is on one side and Al Wood on the other. Just over the hash mark is enough and back out with it. Get out of the corner, you can use two boundary lines to help your defense. That's right. See the little hash mark over there? Well, you saw it a moment ago. Up along the sideline. There it is, a little white mark. All they have to do is get the ball past that, and they're legally fulfilling their obligation. That is the force play. Now, the count is on them once it comes back out. The problem with this situation is if North Carolina makes the slightest mistake in walking with the ball, Palmer standing in the lane too long, all of this is going for naught. I'm surprised to see them do it. I thought they'd wait till they got the lead. Well, you know, North Carolina can play very loose. Even if they lose this game, they've still got a chance to draw for first place. They might want to see just how well they can play this as an under-the-fire experiment before the tournament begins. What have they got to lose? They can find out a lot of things in this. They're going to find out what Duke's going to do. You see Dean Smith way down your right corner screen. He's up giving instructions. Duke is uh, coming out to trap a little bit out of the zone. Duke's new body is taking this as being number one. Bones, here's something. This is kind of taking the game away from these Duke fans right now, too. That's right. They've been here for two hours or more, really raucous, stood in the rain for Tim hours here to get in. Well, they've been and they've been quieted down by all this. They've been, you're exactly right, Jim. They've been here since Tuesday, I understand. Is that right? Since they've Tuesday. Been since Tuesday. Tuesday. Taking turns. And I think the president, I heard this, so don't take this for a fact, but I heard the president, Terry Sanford, had them to let them in early. They were only supposed to get in two hours before game time, but rain like it was, cold like it was, having gone through what they had gone through, he had them to let the student body in early. Well, I got here at 6.30, and they were standing in the rain then. Now we've gone five minutes here with North Carolina holding the ball. They have not taken a shot. Duke leads 2-0. Well, I'll tell you, the first two men are going to take a shot. He's going to be on corner. Al Wood won. Right now, Vince Taylor's along the baseline, and he's the chaser down there against Wood. You don't need to play along that sideline as close to the sidelines as Yonaker is. You've got a man as deceptive as Monaco. He, he's not a fast one, but he's quick. That's going to bring up the talk again, Bones, about the 30-second clock, isn't well, it? Well, this is exactly why the Sun Belt went to 45 seconds, because they ruined the tournament that way. Can I'm I, not saying this ruins this. Can't get a no-action game that way. What we got right now, no-action game. Duke, Duke has gone back now deep. 2-3 yep, zone. Bill Foster is going to play the game here with Dean Smith. At least for the moment, it appears. If this keeps up, Jim, we won't be here long. <laughs> no. Two 
one nothing. That's a good earned run average. That's right. Now you got to look at Bill Foster. He's got a lot riding on this game. As we said a moment ago, if some team other than one of these two wins the ACC tournament, only one of these will get a bid to the NCAA, and undoubtedly, the bid's going to be based on the season record. And right now, Duke is two games behind North Carolina in that respect. That's one of the most crucial reason, I think, that they need to win here, both. They need to get their record back, even with North Carolina. It's just in case some other team and you and I know there are five others right. capable of winning the tournament. That's right. Jim, I don't think there are five others that are capable of winning it, but I do think that there are a number of teams in this conference that could beat either one of these teams on a given night, and that would eliminate them regardless of whether that other team went on all the way. To win three games for some of the teams in the conference, let's say it, it'd be real tough. Well, uh, let me give you this. All right. You'll, ad you'll agree that there are teams here capable of beating either one of those, right? Right. All right, now let's say that all of a sudden they both get beat the same night. Now what have you got? You've got a feel that any team can win, right? Yes, after that. You're going to eliminate both of them. Now you, so you hem me in a corner <laughs> just exactly like Duke wants to do North Carolina. Now put the four corners on your bones. That's about three and a half. Two nothing is the score. If you tuned in, folks, we got a shutout going. Duke University, Vince Taylor. If you think it's just started, you're wrong. They have already played almost nine minutes. Vince Taylor's the player of the game as things now stand. That's right. We'd have to pick him, wouldn't we? We have now played eight minutes approximately here in North Carolina without taking a shot. And Duke's going along with them. You know the Duke team's getting a little edgy. The fans have been in here raising cane for about three hours, two and a half hours. It's the final home game. I don't think it's a bad strategic move by Dean Smith at all. First of all, he gets the fans calmed down. And secondly, he's trying to guarantee a close game. I, I agree with you on both points. Oh, it's only North Carolina knows if all of a sudden it's going to spring into action, so Duke can't really go to sleep. Well, they may be rocked away. If they're not careful, they will be. They're triangling in there, and any any little move now, any little hesitation. I wouldn't have a big tall man out there handling the ball like that. Yonica must be a heck of a ball handler. Well, he can hold it like a grapefruit. <laughs> well, that's true. It looks like he has a handle on it, doesn't he? Here's Al Wood now. He wants to touch it. I called time out one time. I didn't touch it for five minutes, and I wanted to find out if it was a spalling ball. Now Duke switching out to a 1-3-1 one, one again. Duke's got to be careful, too. They're switching zones, and they can get assignments fixed up. That's what North Carolina's looking for. They're looking for a big mistake here by the Duke defense all the while. You know, it wouldn't be a bad idea to, it wouldn't be a bad idea to foul somebody for the simple reason that you might have a chance on an inbound play, and one foul isn't going to hurt you. Not to mention the fact we could use a commercial, eh, folks? Well, we went to them, you know, before when they were playing this kind of ball game, and I gave the replay when they came back. Nothing had happened except that. Whoa, that was close. One. They get down that corner, and you get piddling around with that thing. Do you get jittery bones? Are these players getting a little jittery every time they catch the They're ball? They're not half as jittery as the coach is, I can tell you. <laughs> uh, you know, I don't want it. You take it. Get it away from me. Now they're in a position. But Duke is playing. They just aren't going to give them a layup. That's all there is to it. If you'll notice when it does go in to Corrin, they're in the middle. Three men, at least a minimum of two, will collapse right in the middle, right under that basket. They just aren't going to give it to them. I can't believe what I'm seeing. I could have had they gone ahead two to nothing. Of course, Duke would have come out and then played them. Had to. They're going for the last. <laughs> I can't believe they go for the last shot. They've now played 11 minutes. Scores 2 0 in favor of Duke. Vince Taylor scored on the opening flurry of the game. Oh, Al Wood kicked the ball out of bounds. Now they're saying it went off Vince Taylor's foot. Woo, that's the first little break of the action right there. Now, let's see if we can see it again. All right. Watch the play. The ball's passed on that baseline to Al Wood, and you saw it hit a foot, and the official was right on top of it. Now there's timeout on the court. They'll score. Duke two, North Carolina nothing. Hello, America. 
Piedmont Airlines is flying to new horizons for you. Now, Piedmont flies to Miami and Denver. Boston is a new Piedmont city. Pittsburgh is, too. New York, Chicago, Washington are old friends, of course. Soon, Dallas and Tampa will be, too. At Piedmont, it's been going on for more than 30 years, making new places part of our world and yours. Say hello, hello, Piedmont Airlines. My Charlie loves chicken, so I buy nothing but the best. Holly Farms. I know it's fresh, always tender, and it tastes so good. Hi, Mom. Hi, Charlie. Hi, dear. Hi, big Charlie. Holly Farms chicken. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Oh, wow. We're nothing but the best we'll do. Nothing but the best for you. Holly Farms. Nothing but the best for you. Don't your Charlies deserve the best? Carolina cities. Jane Banks is in the lineup for the first time, a sparkling sophomore from Philadelphia, averaging just under 15 points a game. Banks is in for Duke, replacing Vince Taylor. Now here's something uh, different, Bones. We got an inbounds play, and North Carolina now is going to get it in against Duke. The Blue Devils know they're up against the stall, so they're going to be all out here trying to make an interception. I'm sure they are, but they're still going to protect that inside, so that long pass is going to be easy. I remember in the other game that we were talking about when State beat Duke 12 to 10. A, a man and his wife went out for dinner. When they came back and turned the television set on, it was 7 to 5. She said, come on, honey, it's just started. And it was already in the second half. Well, it's the game you and I broadcast 1966. Duke won 21 20. That game was played in Chapel Hill, and that was another slowdown game. It was about six to four at the half, as I recall. Chapel Hill. I missed it by 35 miles. I flunked the call. Close, yeah, in the right state. <laughs> Duke leads 2 0, and North Carolina's put it in the deep freeze since then. And we've played now almost 12 minutes of the ball game. Eight minutes and 10 seconds to go in the first half. Duke sticking in the zone defense. They're not giving North Carolina anything easy here, and the Tar Heels are not taking anything else up to now. Both these teams ranked in the nation's top ten. North Carolina number four, Duke number six. If they've held it this long, I've got to believe they're going to continue to hold it. Well, you got to sell your players completely, don't you, Bones, on this system yeah, before you, you ever go into it? Absolutely. They, they have to be sold on what you're going to do, or they or do not perform effectively. And, of course, Dean Smith has no problem selling his ball club on idea. Neither does Bill Foster, for that matter. And get him in that corner now. You got He's got the throw long. Whoa, almost broke it up. Out to Dudley Bradley. So that was the closest call we've had to a jump ball. Remember, you can only hold it five seconds with a guy guarding him. But under the ACC rule, that was a near walk by O'Corn. That was close. Under the ACC rule, you don't have jump balls. You alternate possession. There's the turnover, and Duke's got the ball. That's what I was talking Denard. about. Now a near steal, and a foul is called on Dudley Bradley. Bradley on the tip to steal, commits his first personal foul. It's going to be Duke's ball. Now there's timeout on the court. The score still, Duke 2, North Carolina nothing. What do I think about life insurance? Well, I always felt the time you need it the most is when you can afford it the least. But then I talked to this pilot life agent who really understood about the high cost of raising kids. Got me all the protection they need now at the price I can afford now. Jason, you've got it made. With a little help from the pilot, of course. Pilot helps you through life. I know exactly what I want in a truck, and I haven't seen it yet. Toyota, what do you got? The all-new 79 SR5 long bed sport truck. A new sculptured look outside. A new torsion bar front suspension, a car-like ride. You got a Toyota. Tough as a truck, smooth as a car. Toyota, 
You got it. You got it, Toyota. Now stand by, folks. We're going to show you the highlight plays of the first half. Folks. All right, you see that Corrin tossed the ball, and it was Yonaker threw it to him, and Spinark was the one deflected it, and here comes Denard up with the ball, and you're going to see Dudley Bradley foul him right here. Wham, he got it. Well, the personal foul by Bradley gives possession to Duke. Now the tables have turned a little bit. Duke with a 2 nothing lead. They get a chance to attack. If they go up 4 nothing, Bones, does North Carolina still stick to the deep freeze? I think it would be questionable there. I believe he might go ahead and play. It's only oh. six minutes, 50 some seconds to play. North Carolina in the zone. This changes Duke's outlook a little bit too, doesn't it? They can't play with the same abandon because they're not getting possession that often. They've got to get an inside shot, a real good shot. They aren't going to give it up without a good shot. I think they were told that at a time out by Bill Foster, I'm sure. We cannot just take a shot. Go down and run, put it up, they're going to go right back and hold. Duke scored in the first 30 seconds, a follow-up by Vince Taylor, who's no longer in the lineup. Now we've played 13 and a half minutes, and it's still that same score, 2 nothing. Denard sneaking along that baseline down there. They're going to look for one of those alley-oop passes in a few minutes. Jaminski hanging around the basket. One of the main reasons North Carolina is in a zone because of Jaminski. They're playing a 2-3, but uh, it's really a matchup zone. Jaminski was open for a few minutes for one of his good shots, but not the kind of shot that I believe would Boston would want him to take. It's a different kind of stall that North Duke is running here. There, look, there it is, Banks in close. And there's Jaminski following him foul by Yonica. He got good position, and that's the problem with the zone. You have no assignments to block out. And of course, Jaminski slipped right inside of Yonica. Now there's timeout on the court. The score, Duke 2, North Carolina nothing. knows what's real today artificial this artificial that it's almost everywhere but not in Pabst beers because Pabst won't shortcut nature with chemicals or artificial ingredients Pabst blue ribbon Pabst extra light on Decker Pabst brews the best taste in beer honestly quality since 1844 I can't believe the house is already sold I'm glad Fred told us to call Fonville Morrissey Realtors. Any real estate firm that sells over $30 million in residential real estate in one year has to be good. Over $30 million in one year. That's impressive. When you think about it, Fonville Morrissey couldn't be that successful unless they were being recommended by other satisfied customers. I know. I'm sold on Fonville Morrissey. Hey, how about the Bakers? They're looking for a new home. Raleigh and Carey are sold on Fonville Morrissey Realtors. Duke wanted all the time. Banks is going up in the air. He takes the shot. Now watch Jaminski slide in there. He gets the ball off the board. Now watch Yonica was out of position and went over the top and fouled him. One of the reasons they really can't challenge Banks on that play, Bones, he is so good at the drop-off or dump-off pass. They've got a layoff of it. They put uh, pressure on him. He'll find an open man in close. Jim, that some people may think this is a night off for the officials, but this is really a tough game for them to call because anything they call is going to be seen by everybody because of the slowdown. Now you can see effects, perhaps, of the added pressure of this type of a score. Everything is magnified. Jaminski will go again for his second free throw. Three nothing now. Four court pressure by Duke. North Carolina has not taken a shot yet. Now we played over 14 minutes. Boy, oh me. That was a Bobby Feller throw if I've ever seen one. Three nothing. Are they up? They're still going to spread it out. North Carolina still in their slowdown attack here, trailing three nothing. Our Hills have not taken a shot. North Carolina this year averaging. 77 and a half points a game. Well, I'll tell you something. They've got Yonaker in a different position from what they had him before. They've got him way down in the corner now, trying to get him to slide in behind Banks. Now, he could do it right now. Banks knows there where he is. he is. There he is. You can right. see Banks. He's down it. Yonaker was way up high, and they were using a triangle on this side, but they got in trouble because of that, and they pushed him down. Spinarco's supposed to stay with him. 
Just in time, I counted three and a half. They tried to make a backdoor move that time and bounced stop. There goes Bernardo, ties him up. Yeah, but I think the ball's out of bounds to North Carolina. Yeah, but it'll be North Carolina's ball. But now if there's Duke. another jump ball, Duke can get the ball. That's the rule in Atlantic Coast Conference. It means Smith talking to his defensive wizard, Dudley Bradley. I think they underestimate how quick Spinarkle is, and you can't let him get too close. Now, you may race him the length of the floor and beat him, but you aren't going to beat him from three feet. That's very long arms. Oh, he almost threw a charge. Three nothing will score. Duke in the lead. That's where they wanted to get it down to Yonaker. Getting very close to the five-second call here. There's Yonaker again. This time he clears it out quickly. Nobody should hold the ball long if they would want this to work. Because get it to the first free man you see and don't piddle around. Yonaker takes the shot, the first one for North Carolina, and Duke's up the ball. Boy, he got nothing but ass. They went 15 minutes and 53 seconds before taking a shot. 355 for in the first half. Duke leads three under. Jaminski Cook. Now all of that patience they had and all the way they come, the crowd is gone. Five-point lead by Duke. Five-nothing. North Carolina is still going to stick to the delivered attack. But now the fans are getting in the air. Out of bounds. A turnover for Duke. This is, a, this is a problem with doing this, Jim. You've got to be absolutely perfect at it. Now Duke has momentum building. A 5 nothing lead. They'll get the ball. Now there's timeout on the court, and the score is Duke 5, North Carolina nothing. I don't know you, but I know what that is. That's a Hardee's Big Roast Beef Sandwich. My all-time favorite food. Sliced thin, tender, tall and juicy, and it smells so good, and I am so hungry. Let's go, runner. I'll be back for the French fries. Hardee's, best eating in town, up and down and all around. Estate planning? Always figured that was for millionaires. Then my pilot life agent pointed out that every family benefits from making plans in advance. Now I have a life insurance plan that will make sure, for one thing, that this house will be lived in, not sold off. I'm no millionaire, but with a little help from the pilot, my estate's in good shape. <laughs> but not this mailbox. Pilot helps you through life. Here's one of the few baskets you're going to see in the first half. Watch Banks beat that ball. Jaminski goes up and dunks, but what you did not notice, baby, was the manner in which he held Yarnaker, where he had him, right on his hip, until time to break for the basket. Five to nothing. That's the Duke lead. In case you're joining us late, North Carolina put the game on ice. At the very outset, after Duke got the first two points, North Carolina held the ball until turnovers here forced them to take a shot, which they missed. They've taken only one shot. And now the Blue Devils get it on another bad pass with a five running lead and three and a half minutes to go. The question now is how much longer will North Carolina insist on the slowdown? Now Duke's going to pull North Carolina out of the zone. Oh. Well, I guess Bill Foster said, well, what's good for the goose is good for the gander. They can force North Carolina to come out now because Duke's in the lead five nothing. Now the home fans are going to love this because this is their team dictating things. Well, they're not making much of a, an effort. North Carolina is right now so far as trapping them like Duke was, was making on North Carolina. They got about a full way of movement there. That's the way to move the ball as quickly as you can. As long as you dribble it, you're going to let somebody get up on you. Right away, they're turning the ball loose. A little fake one way and go the other. That's all they got to do. You got to fake, a little movement now. North Carolina will keep coming until they try for a trap. They got to try for a trap, but they have no one on the other side now. They need to move Banks down a little bit. He and Denard can shake hands. Now he moved it down. It's the same lineup for Duke that went to the NCAA final game last year, losing to Kentucky in the championship. Jim, has the team ever gone out with no points at the half? I suppose so, but I don't recall. Banks made a little fake. 
You notice the Duke team is making the ball on most occasions, and that's the thing to do to make the defense go the opposite way and then throw back. Uh, two or three ball. really great passes on this Duke team, boss. Banks may be the best. Bender's excellent. And Spinarco. You see Denard fake him that time, fake with his head. So they'll keep the defense uh, very, very honest. That's the first time Spinarco's touched it in what seems like hours. Now they're about to pin up now. He's pin up. Deadly Bradley should go down deep. They almost has Spinarco coming in from the backside. They got Mr. Outlet all the time in Jaminski. They can always have an outlet. 125 to go. We're getting down close to halftime. We'll remind you that we first security's fast break halftime show again visits two legendary characters out of the past. Former referees Lou Bello and Charlie Ackman. If you didn't see the first show, you don't want to miss this one. Two funny fellows, Bones. I know you remember both. Yeah, I had them many times. Duke leads 5 0. Now the Blue Devils are playing a little tease game of their own. 59 seconds to go. They might just wait here for the last shot. I don't think North Carolina is going to get a point in the, first, in the first half, Bones. I don't believe they will. I believe they're going to run it down. They're making a little bit more effort now. They're going to drag that foot in a minute. Now he needs to flip it quick. Well, you can say it's been one half in which Duke did not make a mistake, right? That's right. So far, 35 seconds to go in the half. Javinsky gets rid of it. He doesn't want it in there because he knows five men are clapping. If he does, he's going to hit somebody under the basket. 30 seconds to go in the half. Duke watch every t watch every time the ball goes into Javinsky, how Banks goes that baseline to go that hook. 20 seconds to go. Duke's not going to wait for the last shot of the half. They're leading 5-0. They may not even take it, Jim. It's going to look like a football score. They got to go now. Maybe. And a foul on O'Corn. He just fouled Banks with 10 seconds to go. So perhaps North Carolina is going to get the ball and a chance for a shot. This telecast is presented by the authority of the Atlantic Coast Conference and the CD Chelsea Company. And any use of this program without written consent is prohibited. The announcers on this program have been approved and contracted for by the CD Chelsea Company. Yonaker replaced the lineup by Pete Budko. Duke can still get the ball in bounds, of course, and wait down for the last shot. And to Spinarco. Double team. Spinarco gets off the shot, scores. Six seconds to go, seven to nothing. North Carolina's got two seconds. Cole Scott from 40 feet, and North Carolina's been shut out, much by its own design, in the first half against Duke University. The nation's fourth-ranking team coming up with a zero is a victim of its own stalling tactics thus far. So that's the end of the first half of play with a score. Duke seven and North Carolina nothing. We'll be back in a moment with a halftime show. Next time you fly, say hello to Piedmont Airlines, the quick, comfortable way to go, whether you're flying for business or a holiday. Our roomy jets go to where the business is. Small cities, big cities, over 90 cities in all. We've got pleasure flights to America's resorts, too. The beaches, golf courses, your favorite ski country. See your travel agent or give us a call. Say hello, say hello, hello, Piedmont Airlines. How you feeling, my people? Feeling like me? Got a headache and upset stomach? Well, here's the most beautiful sound of the evening. Listen to the sound of fast relief. Alka-Seltzer, it instantly begins to break up acid indigestion. It speeds relief to your aching head. That sounds fast. That sounds fast. That sounds fast. You feeling better, people? So what do you say? Oh, what a relief it is. Fast, fast, fast. Stand All by, right. folks. Here comes the highlight reel of the first half. I think it's the highlights. Here's one of them. Jaminski pulled a pass from Banks, makes a dunk, uh, and then right at the end. Here, we're, we're that gonna... was one. Now here's the other one. Okay. Jaminski on the dunk shot. That Duke of five. Okay, what's Spinarco? I think he was fouled there, but he made a good move in. I'm not so sure he didn't slip the foot a little bit, but he made a basket, and that was the highlights of the first half. North Carolina took only two shots the entire first half, one an air ball, and the other one a 40-footer that was also short. And it's 7-0 in favor of Duke. We pause now for station identification. This is the Atlantic Coast Conference Television Network. Wife abuse is not a problem of the poor. It affects women of all economic levels, ages, and races. If it affects you, contact Wake County Women's Aid, services for abused women. 
Uh, yes, sir. Do you take uh, trade-ins? Sir, this is Shoney's. I bought use... this uh, hamburger at some other place. Oh, and you I should thought... have come to Shoney's, home of the double-deck hamburger, big boy. I only took one little bite out of it. No. I'll throw in this cola. No, no. You're right, this imitation doesn't compare. Bring me a big boy. Right away. Now, these fries are like new. You're gonna love Shoney's. We borrowed some nice ideas from your mother, like fresh ingredients and lots of choices. And here's your fudge cake. I'll trade you the slate model Sunday with the original nut. See, look. I drive a quality, precision-built car that I can depend on. I put the General Electric heat pump and year-round comfort system into my new home because it had all the qualities I was looking for. Plus, I got this cash refund direct from GE. To me. I mean us. See Tar River Roofing and Air Conditioning, 218 South Main Street in Lewisburg. The one and only for ACC Basketball. Back at uh, Cameron Indoor Stadium in Duke University, where it's a rather bizarre score at halftime. Seven to nothing. Duke, the leader over fourth ranked North Carolina, all because North Carolina held the ball. Well, another championship was decided, and that was the Atlantic Coast Conference Swimming Championship, the 21st annual title. Went again to North Carolina State, a dynasty that began under Willis Casey and is continuing. 586 points was the final count. The University of North Carolina finished runner-up over 100, uh, well, exactly 180 points behind them. Then came Duke, Maryland, Clemson, Virginia, and Wake Forest. And the top individual performer was Ken Ireland. He took both of his backstroke uh, first places in today's 21st annual Atlantic Coast Conference swimming champ and diving championship finals. Seven to nothing here, Duke University leading North Carolina. Stay tuned now for Fast Break, an interesting look inside all basketball. Wheat First Securities brings you Fast Break with Billy Becker. I told you Fast Break would return to visit with these two referees, Lou and Charlie. Any game being worked by Bellow and Ekman, especially in tandem, was a treat for many fans. I'll be back to relive some of the old days along Tobacco Road after this word from Wheat First Securities. Many people think of Wheat First Securities as basically a brokerage firm, which is fine. That's a large part of what we do. But sound investment counseling goes way beyond stocks and bonds, so we offer other financial services, like insurance, financial planning, commodities, and tax shelters. There's more than one reason to give us a call. For sound financial advice, talk to Wheat First. Lou, what do you think about the three-man officiating? I really am in favor of it, Bill. Not only is there more men, every other sport has added officials until this year. Basketball, it's needed. The fast break. The average college player is, is in his early 20s. The referees are 40, 45, 50. So it gets the good coverage and what the coaches all want nowadays to play off the ball. I finally have realized, after all those years of refereeing, the play off the ball. They're setting the blocks, setting the picks. They were getting away with that. There's no question about it. We were watching the ball. I think they improved the mechanics. It's really going to improve the game. It's great. The pros have even adopted it. And today, with these three referees, they got a symphony going on out there. They got, let me tell you something, Billy. They could put five referees out there. And if they can't referee, it ain't nothing going to happen any different. They're going to have the same old garbage, the same you choke, and in the, the usual profanity and the stuff that goes with it. Last night, they had a play. The kid drove baseline. The guy's under the forward, the referee. And it goes by him. Now, the guy in the middle of the floor, I don't know what he's supposed to be doing, but he's looking in there, too. The guy from the back, he calls a phantom foul. I don't know where the hell he got that foul, right? But he gave it a toot, and that brought Sloan up 14 feet in the air. Now, he ain't even near him. Now, if he'd have been refereeing two men, he'd have been over there having the play come to him. But because he has three men, he has a tendency to lope. And he said, well, it's going that way. And he saw the other guy didn't do nothing, so he, he gave it one of them. I said to myself, ain't this awful. <laughs> Now, Charlie, let me let me be honest, though. The game has changed. The guys are playing 90 feet all the time. If you don't have three guys, how are you going to get there? Let me tell you something, Billy. That whistle slows up 96 guys. They could play 450 feet. If I get tired, I'm blowing that whistle. <laughs> I got to travel. I got something going on out there. And if I'm getting that tired, I don't belong out there. But at 90 feet don't mean anything to me. I ran for years. My ankles hurt. And with this game today, tonight, I can referee any game in the ACC with three men. If he gives me that <laughs> foul line to foul line, he don't need to worry about no problems getting out of hand. I'll take care of the situation. The toughest call to make. 
Billy, when you were playing and in my day, charge and block. But they made it easy if you hit the man with your body. You know what the toughest call is now? And it just came in as I was finishing up. Everybody is so big. There's six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. The hands around the basket. Interference. Uh, basket interference. Uh, grabbing that ball, batting it away on its downward flight. I think that's the toughest call now. I don't think there's any question about it. I think they're going to have to raise the basket. And they will raise the basket. You know, we talk about mechanics in uh, refereeing. <laughs> you know, the perfect mechanics, the dre proper dress code, uh, the hands, the movement. How about, how about your mechanics? Well, when I did the charge call, Billy, I would give him, and you hit him, and I'd, and I'd go all the way. The other night, I'm watching a ball game, and a referee went like anywhere. Whop! He hit himself on the head. I thought he was going on the floor. The poor kid, he went down the floor stumbling. I said to but myself, that's the proper way, though. What? Oh, is that proper? He's going to be goofy before the season's over. If he gets many charge plays, this guy's got to go to the funny point. He's got to be a nut. You know, Lou, your buddy Charlie, favorite sign was the old hitting on the head, the old, the old charge. Yours, great one, was the run. Oh, yeah, you know, see, Charlie was built so close to the ground, he loved to do that. But I had him beat. I would give him that like that, and I'd give the Groucho. The Groucho marks low and up and down. Groucho, <laughs> charging, traveling. To the other end of the floor. <laughs> Always. Oh. I want you to watch this play right here, All right. Now, okay? And, and when it's over, I want you to tell me, you right. know, what charge or a block. Right. All right? All right, what do you think? Well, I think it was a charge. It was a charge. Yeah, no question. No doubt in my mind. Now, Lou, take a look at this. The charge and the block. Tough situation. Now, I was a charge official. I love the charge. I give him the bucket. But that one, there's no question. The player got in front of it, moved in front. It's a block. It's a block, Billy. Block. Now, how about this one? It's a little different situation. I think you could have called that a block. Is it a block? A block. Okay. No question. Well... No question, but it, it, I made it look like it was no question. Hello, let's take a look at that tough call, the charge in a block. It was the toughest call in our day, but that one right there, there's no question about it. It's obviously charge high old silver. For all the changes in the ACC officiating since Charlie and Lou moved on, some things have remained the same. Basketball officials still have a difficult job, and few of us would switch places with them. I'm Billy Packer, and this has been a Wheat First Securities Fast Break. All right, folks, honest, no kidding. The score at halftime is Duke 7 and North Carolina nothing. We'll return with more halftime activities after this important message. It was a long, hard run, but I finally won. Now it's all behind. Got blue ribbon on my mind. I've got Pabst Blue Ribbon on my mind. There are a lot of beers, but there's only one Pabst. It's brewed to be the best, naturally, with no artificial ingredients. And you can taste it. I've got Pabst Blue Ribbon on my mind. Shh. You hungry, honey? Like a bear. You know what I'm thinking about? Hardy's Big Cheese. Mm. Two pure beef burgers, charbroiled, with a whole lot of tangy melted mm. cheese, all hot and juicy. I must be dreaming. I can smell that big cheese. Well, open your eyes, good buddy, and you can see it. <laughs> Bless your warm little heart. Hardy's, best eaten in town, up and down and all around. Well, the deep breeze has hit the deep south tonight. North Carolina holding the ball on Duke, seven nothing. That's the halftime score. Wasn't totally unexpected. No, it wasn't. The way it came about, I think, was unexpected, uh, Jim. I thought if North Carolina got a lead, I believed if they got a lead of two to nothing, that they would hold the ball. But when they were behind two to nothing, I didn't think they would. And then after Jaminski made the foul shot and it was three to nothing, I felt that they'd go on and play. But evidently they. The game plan was not that. Now, Dean could have told his fellas at the half, look, we, we could have been seven points behind. It could have been 37 to 30. I believe North Carolina will come out and play the second half. Okay, it's been a long day at the Atlantic Coast Conference. The standings will show you how the pairings are shaping up. This game, of course, is for first place, or at least a share of it. Duke needs to win to get a tie with North Carolina. There's a bye for first place. If there's a tie, they'll draw it out of the hat tomorrow morning. Virginia defeated Maryland by three points this afternoon and clinched third place. They will play the team that is sixth. Maryland will play Clemson. We know that in the night game next Thursday because Maryland finished fourth, Clemson fifth. But Wake Forest and North Carolina State 
Arkansas State win by 23 points, and they've tied for sixth place. They'll also have to draw to break that tie. So that'll be tomorrow morning at the commissioner's office in Greensboro, and it's going to be the loser of this uh, ball game, whether it's a tie or whether Duke loses it, against the winner of that draw, either stayed away. That's how it shapes up. Well, you know, people are going to say if Duke North Carolina loses, they're going to say that uh, Dean played it wrong. If they come back and win, they're going to say played it right. Same thing for Foster. Look at the zeros on those statistics. By the way, not only is North Carolina not scoring the first half, they haven't scored a basket. Maybe the first time in history a team hasn't even hit the rim. No iron at all. They were short. Uh, Yonaker overshot the basket. And Cole Scott, in desperation, undershot the basket. Other than that, there hasn't been an attempt made. Well, you heard Bones. He expects to see North Carolina come out and go at it at a fast pace, which is their normal style of play when the second half gets underway. And still, just a seven-point lead by Duke University, even though the Tar Heels have yet to score. The teams have returned to the court, so we'll be back in a moment for the start of the second half after this message. Hello, Main Street. USA, hello, Fifth Avenue. Hello, smiling southern faces. Hello, busy northeast places. From the middle of America to the outer banks. Just say hello, say hello. Hello, Piedmont Airlines. Say hello, say hello. Hello, Piedmont Airlines. A couple of years back, crops around here didn't look quite so pretty. The drought hit us hard. Corn turned brown and the ponds dried up. We almost lost it. NCNB kept me going that year. They knew I was good for it, and I was. <laughs> you know, maybe this is one family farm that'll always be a family farm. <laughs> North Carolina now has returned to the court. Duke's been out for about the last five minutes warming up. Very little action in the first half, as you know. North Carolina holding the ball, and it's seven to nothing right now at the half. The second half of tonight's telecast is brought to you by the Pilot Life Insurance Company and your local pilot representative. Pilot, the company that helps you through life. And by Hardee's. Hardy's, best eaten in town, up and down and all around. By Pabst Blue Ribbon. Pabst is brewed to be the best naturally with no artificial ingredients, and you can taste it. By Holly Farms Chicken, nothing but the best for you. By Toyota, you asked for it, you got it, Toyota. By Piedmont Airlines, now serving over 90 cities in 16 states. Piedmont, making new places part of our world and yours. And by MCMB, the people who know that to be the best bank in the state, you have to be the best in the neighborhood. because of the no jump ball rule in the Atlantic Coast Conference, Duke University is going to get a chance immediately to add to its 7-0 lead because the Blue Devils, I believe, will have their turn here to get the ball out of bounds. That's exactly right, because there was one jump ball and North Carolina got it out of bounds. Now it goes to Duke. So Duke will start the second half with possession from backcourt. North Carolina is setting up in a pressure defense. They're going to go full court pressure. Might be a tip off here. They're going to come out of their stalling game and uh, play a 20 minute ball game trailing by seven points. Man for man matchup. So North Carolina is going man for man. Spinaco baseline behind him is Dudley Bradley. Same starting lineup here for the second half. This is Bender now Spinaco looking at Jeminski. And there's a personal foul charging on Spinaco. That turns it back over. That, by the way, is the first personal foul of the ball game against Duke. They committed none. Watch the, the move. Spinaco gets it over his head. Now he, he pushes him off with his left arm, his shoulder there. And of course, the referee goes right on top of it and called it right. 
Had he gone straight, Bones right into the legs of Bradley would have been a blocking foul, no doubt. Right. Now yeah. let's see if they don't move in there. They're going to move after it now. They yeah. believe they can score against them. North Carolina's given up at stall. Now they're going to attack. Zone defense by Duke, 2-3. They're going to take a good shot and try to get back in this ball game. Ball kicked out by Denard. And Jim, if they get back in it, they're going to go back to the stall. I'm saying if they get a tie ball game. 7-0 right now, Duke leading. North Carolina's not uh, hit the rim yet. They've taken two shots, both missing. Defense, 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 defense. And Duke has that zone packed back in there to make them take that outside shot because they know the little chance they have. Oh, Corn takes the shot. He saw his man in the air. I think he just did that because he had the in the air. That's right. He threw it up to get it, and he got iron that time. That's the first time. Watch this move. Here's O'Corn going. He sees he's going to fall into him, so he's going to turn it loose, which is smart basketball. He's going to get two shots for him. I don't think O'Corn was going to shoot. No, he wasn't. Well, Mike O'Corn and Mike Jeminski today were named to the Basketball Writers All-America first five. And that's the first point of the ball game by North Carolina. By Michael Corn, who did not score in the first half of Tar Heels, it's now 7 1. 7 2. Now they're going to try to trap. They're going to do it, use every defensive measure they have now in this second half. Have a great defensive team, as all of you know. Under Spinarco, great pass from Banks. You're right, that Banks is a great pass, a beautiful pass to Spinarco. And Spinarco will go on that blind side. You turn your head just for a second, you're dead. Nine to two, Duke back to his uh, seven point lead. Now we're back into some normal action here at the Atlantic Coast Conference. This game, the first place hanging in the balance. North Carolina right now has a one game lead, but they're trailing in this game, and Duke could tie for it for the win. Just a minute, O'Corrin was open a minute ago, but execution is a thing now, and they've got to get back into the flow of the game. They haven't played any yet. They still have to be patient here against the zone, boys. That could be difficult. Here's Bradley. Dudley Bradley on the outside. First field goal of the game at 18 20. So they won 21 minutes and 40 seconds without a field goal in this game. Back door, Monarco. That'll be goaltending. Back door cut by Jim Monarco, and Duke is up to 11 to 4. He'll change direction on you, go behind you. He's just absolutely fantastic at that. 18 minutes to go on the game. Look at that zone packed back in there. 2-3. They're not going to go out very far. They're staying inside the foul circle. Slide from one side to the other. They're going to test North Carolina's outside shooting. Cole's got time to penetrate. They could have pulled up and taken a nice little jumper in there. Might have been slapping down his throat. Best outside shooter is this man right here, Al Wood. Dudley Bradley not too bad, neither is Cole Scott. Dudley Bradley again. Out to Spinarco, and Duke's got the ball. What a fast break. Jaminski to Bender. Bender driving. That's a good pass by Jaminski. Good hesitation by Bender. He didn't just take it and drive home. He looked as if he was going to pass the ball. 13-4, as Duke now goes up by nine. Well, the first three minutes of the second half, and now the action in the game is on this time. Al with the corner for North Carolina. Jim, you notice that defense for Duke, it slides all the way across the foul line to the other side once they get it on that side. 13 to six. Defense! Defense! It's gonna be a 20-minute ball game, and that's what maybe Deep Step was playing for. Defense! 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 Or at least what he settled for. Jay Banks, always a threat, expert passer. Bob Bender in trouble. Banks, inside pass, broken up by North Carolina. The pass for Marco, putting it up on the goal. Will not count. There was a foul on the play against Yannicka before the shot. Second personal foul on Rich Yannicka of North Carolina. Nope, it was on Jaminski. I'm sorry, the foul was on Jaminski. We want to tell you that tonight's game between Clemson and Buffalo State has been rescheduled for tomorrow at 3 o'clock. Buffalo State was unable to get to Clemson for today's schedule. Night game. North Carolina on the attack, trailing by seven. Now they go out a little ways on Woods, much further than they go out on Cold Stock. O'Corn driving. Reflected. Jaminski the rebound. There's a foul on the play. It'll be on Woods. Al Wood fouling on the play. 
How hard is it to readjust bones after you've been on just a standing around tempo? Well, it takes a little time for you to get into the flow of things. And it's going to take North Carolina a little while. They've got to find the men that they want to hit. Let's see if they can pick up that personal foul. All right, you see Bud goes. He tries to go up and put the ball in the basket. You see Jaminski there. Uh, right right out here you see Al Wood. Right down across the neck of Kenny Denard. Now they've got uh, something wrong with the clock here at Cameron Indoor Stadium. They're looking down at the North Carolina huddle. And on the bench down there is Walter Davis, one of the outstanding uh, young players of the NBA and a former All-American in North Carolina. I think the problem is that clock's not used to running that, but there's Walter Davis. He's been injured, plays for Phoenix in the Pro League. Somebody told me that not anybody but Walter was the greatest basketball player. Walter Davis. Well, Walter Davis wrote the greatest comeback that ever was uh, scored by North Carolina against a Duke team. He scored eight points. Well, was it about 17 seconds? Something like that. Or led that rally about four or five years ago. 13 to six to score. Seven point lead by Duke. Gene Banks. There goes Spinarco down the middle. Spinarco driving. Got the basket and he's fouled. Most of the foul is on Jet Dalton. Basket is good. You see him slide his body through there. Well, Spinarco's fired up for this one, and now there's timeout on the court. The score, Duke 15, and North Carolina is second. and low for a car that'll start. In all kinds of weather. Toyota, what have you got? Dependable right from the start. The 1979 Toyota Corolla. A fully transistorized ignition system. A car reliable even in the nastiest weather. Corolla quality from start to finish. You know, I'll bet there was a lot of good country cooking that came from that old log cabin. Probably baked bread and an iron skillet on an open hearth. And don't you know that was a good aroma. And you can still get bread baked from the old-timey recipes. It's called Old Hearth, Bunny Old Hearth. Just plain, down-home, old-timey, natural bread. No preservatives and baked with 100% pure vegetable shortening. So for down-home, old-timey bread, reach for Old Hearth, Bunny Old Hearth, the three meals a day bread. Watch Spinarkle now as he slides through. Did you see him turn his body sideways, and it was Dalton that got him from the rear. Yeah, one of the byproducts of this slowdown game could cost uh, Jim Spinarkle some of the records he's challenging for. He's 54 points behind Art Heyman in the all-time scoring. He's like six assists behind Dick DiVenzio, and he's heading for a field, free throw and field goal record of all time. Right now, in this game, he scored nine points. He's outscored the entire North Carolina team. It's 16 to 6, and this is Duke's biggest lead. Believe it or not, no press trapping for Duke, but now North Carolina's got it in. The Blue Devils drop back in their 2 3. Zeminski in the lane. Except for when Wood gets the ball or Corin gets it, they stay inside that foul circle or the foul circle distance. They're backing up protected against Bradley. They're backing off of Dalton just far enough to hold their arm up. Now he was got the shot off. Jed Dalton on the outside takes that shot. North Carolina was not taking that shot in the first half, as you well know. He split the seam. The two guards were split between him, and he just went up and put it in. 16 to 8, dude. Gene Banks, a little bit of a collision with O'Corn. Like the umpire said, it ain't nothing till I call it. That looked like something. Got to axe away from the ball here by Duke. Here's Spinaco. Bryant got hit from behind. 
Now the fast break, Al Wood coming in. Oh, it's Denard with a great block. Kenny Denard unbelievably cutting the path of the quick Al Wood has made a fantastic defensive play. Watch this move. Dobbins going to pass the ball to Al Wood. Now watch Denard. He's going to have to keep his eye on the ball on anything else. That's all he got. He couldn't have just thrown his arm in there. Had to look at the ball as he did it. Now Duke is zoning again at 16 to 8. Eight point lead by Duke. North Carolina went a half tonight without scoring. Maybe a new conference record. At least ties one. Al Wood on the outside. The second basket here in the second half for North Carolina. 16 to 10. North Carolina getting back in the game. The only oh great touch pass into Javinsky won't count. The foul came first. The foul was on uh, Yonaker, but that was some pass work by Duke. Watch it again. Well, it was close, Bones, but. Uh, uh, 16 to 10. 14 minutes to go in the ball game. A six point lead by Duke. Now Spinaco's open from the corner. Rebound by Al Wood. Had a man in the open, didn't see him. Bob Bender slows down the break. It's Jeff Doughton to Jeff Wolf who's come on. Now Doughton on the outside again. Rebound from Bernard. Batted away by North Carolina. Duke's basketball and the Blue Devils are up 16-10. Still over almost 14 minutes to go in the game. Here's a steal by Dudley Bradley. Good fake by Bradley on the drive. Bernard again has got it. All right, Bernard's pulled down the last two rebounds, and Al Wood fouls in the backcourt. Second personal foul on Al Wood. And now that's team foul number four. And there you see again, Al Wood made a nice move, and now you see Denard cleanly has the rebound, and Wood stays back here to press. You'll see how that cost him. Right there, just goes over the top, and Denard does a good job protecting the ball. All court pressure now by North Carolina, but Denard's got it over the line. Double teaming, now North Carolina putting on pressure, Denard behind his back, loose ball, Denard recovers. It's a fancy passing Duke team. If you watch them, you know that. Sixteen ten. Live pass to Jaminski on the inside. He's blocked and foul. A foul's going to be on Al Wood. He got in too late. Three fouls now on Al Wood, the leading scorer of the season for North Carolina. That was a good pass, and it was, it was close. It was like Bellow said a minute ago. You see the pass going in from Denard over to Banks, and Banks lobbed the ball in. And I believe he got there just a little bit late. You got to give a man room to come down, That's right. Bones. That's right. Once he gets up in the air, you have to allow him to come down. Wood didn't do that. Vince Taylor's now in the Duke lineup. Double team on Banks, but there's Spinarco lobbing to Jaminski, and Jaminski, big guy's got it, a block by Wolf, and right back it comes to Banks. Gene Banks' first basket. There's a foul on the play. Postal foul against North Carolina. And I uh, was trying to pick up who it was. I think it might have been Wolf. Well, watch the play again. Let's see. Here's Banks going up. He's got a piece of his arm. The ball goes through the basket. And of course, you know what? That makes it two points. Jeff Wolf. Al Corn gets charged with a foul. His second. Well, Banks will be at the line. Could be a three-point play. That is team foul number six against North Carolina. So Duke now goes to the bonus with 13 minutes to go. Eugene Banks. Those are his first three points of the game. 19 to 10. Now Duke with a zone press. Tapping backcourt. Al Wood on the stop. Wood now is beginning to pick up some of the scoring for North Carolina. Six points he's got in the second half. 19 to 12. Vince Taylor, tremendous quickness and speed. The lob pass to Banks. Back to Vince Taylor. Taylor being challenged. North Carolina now 
They're stepping up its defensive pressure. As slow as they were the first half, they certainly picked the tempo up now. There goes Panarkel under reverse left. <laughs> Wonderful shot by Jim Panarkel. 21 12. Duke is back to a nine point lead. You can't walk the baseline better than that. The tie backs that you might expect from these two teams. We're getting it here in the second half. Al Wood and out, rebound, tipped off to Spinarco. Spinarco now settles things down. This leads by nine points. They want to get it inside to Mike Jaminski, who was named All-America first team today by the basketball writers, along with Mike O'Corn. Magic Johnson, Larry Bird, also on that team. And for that defense by North Carolina, double teaming on the switch. Taylor looks a little reluctant to shoot the ball. He had a good shot that time. There's the loud to Jaminski, but it's picked off alertly by Wolf. North Carolina can pull back within seven. Down pass is broken up, but Wolf gets it back. I don't think Al Wood was expecting the ball that time, and you should always be disappointed if you don't get it. Never be surprised when it passes to you. Jed Doughton from the perimeter. Rebound is down to Wolf. Uh, there's a foul. That'll be on Bob Bender of Duke University. Most foul on Bender. Fourth team foul of the half, and now there's a timeout on the court with a score. Duke 21, North Carolina 12. 70 calories, you can't beat that. That's extra light, half the calories, all the taste, naturally. How do you like that beer? It's terrific. That's because naturally brewed Pabst Extra Light has 70 calories, half the calories of our regular beer. Right. And it's a lot less filling, and I get all the taste I want. That's extra light, half the calories, all the taste, naturally. Don't say light. Say extra light. I don't know you, but I know what that is. That's a Hardee's Big Roast Beef Sandwich. My all-time favorite food. Sliced thin, tender, tall and juicy, and it smells so good. And I am so hungry. Let's go, runner. I'll be back for the French ride. Hardee's, best eaten in town, up and down and all around. Watch this, but watch Monarco go the baseline, left-handed now. Watch him, he continues to go. He makes a good move, he doesn't step out of bounds, makes a backspin with the ball, and makes the basket and brings the house down. There's no record kept uh, officially in the Atlantic Coast Conference on fewest points scored by a team in one half, but oh. I think maybe we have a new one established here tonight. Well, Jim, if you go way, way, way back, I think there was one team that didn't score at all in the whole ball game. Bones, you can't go way, way back in the Atlantic Coast Conference because it only goes to 1954. Uh, right? you, got, you got some of the same team. What's the difference? <laughs> 21 to 12. Nine point lead by Duke. North Carolina did not score a single point in the first half. It was 7 to nothing at the stop. Now the action is back to a normal tempo between these two here in the second half. Great rivals. Al Wood's not in that now, and of course, uh, he's the man that's going to hit the basket for him. As Cole Scott way outside. Longest shot of the ball game thus far. That's been hit. Cole Scott took a 45 foot of the half and didn't touch anything. That one did. They played about even terms in the second half. Yep, back to seven. 21 14. Here's Denard open from the corner. Cannot give him that shot. They gave it to him. They didn't believe he could hit it. He did. That tore him up. 23 to 14, and we're exactly midway in the second half. Ten minutes to go in the game. Own defense by Duke. If Duke wins, there'll be a tie for first place. They'll draw out of the half for the bye for the Atlantic Coast Conference tournament next week. How important that is. That'll be tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock in the commissioner's office for the draw. They already have one draw to break a tie for sixth place. It'll be at 10.30. 10.30. As O'Corn takes a shot, I don't believe he has. I don't recall. 
Knocked down by Denard. Good zone is keeping North Carolina way outside. They're reluctant right now to take the long shot. Well, they just saw the corn pass up about an 18 footer. They're playing on a stamp out there, and North Carolina's reluctant to make that move. Well, the quick hands of Spinarkle again, you were talking about, Bones. I tell you, if he gets within three feet of you, he's tough. Now, watch that defense come back in there. They can shake hands with one another. And once you get it on one side, they all slide over to that side. Oh, one by Cole Scott again. Rebound, Jaminski gets it off the Banks. Banks will find somebody. Duke always breaking man with the basket. Duke makes a good move toward the ball and then fakes and goes behind the man as well as any team I've ever seen. There's Johnny Harrell now guard for 22. Banks works on the inside. Penetrating the score. 25 14, that's the biggest lead of the ball game. 11 points. Eight points and 15 seconds to go. Fans are yelling defense, defense. And there's the first timeout been called by North Carolina. Exactly eight minutes to go. There's timeout on the court. No score. Duke 25, North Carolina 14. There are lots of ways to get acid indigestion when you have a headache. Sometimes it's not what you eat, but when you eat it. Sometimes it is what you eat. Sometimes it's not what or when, but how much. For all those times, take Alka-Seltzer. Listen. It's the sound of fast relief. Oh, what a relief it is! <laughs> Put up your hands, Put up your hands, The lowest score racked up by these teams this year for Duke was 49 points. North Carolina's low was 54 points. They beat Maryland 54-53 on that one. Duke held a sal to 42 points. All those records may be washed out here tonight. It's now 25-14 with eight minutes to go. Jim Wood, Al Wood's back in there, and so is Virgil now. Virgil is, John's a, a real good shooter, so he's put two real good shooters in there with those four. And of course, uh, Wolf is still in the basketball game, and I believe Cole Scott is too. He's got four good shooters in there now. Let's see what happens. All right, John Virgil, number 43, a junior from Elm City, New York. Excellent shooter. Here he is. Virgil, good shooting touch, blocked out of the air. Wolf's got it down the middle. Front by Kaminsky, off to Spinarco. Now we ought to see something. Good. There comes Spinarco. He's got it. 13 points for John Spinarco, but Mike Kaminsky slam block set it up. 27 to 14. Well, the crowd is really roaring now with seven and a half minutes to go. Duke's been able to stay in the zone because they got the lead. Here goes Virgil, gets off a shot. Virgil was sitting there, a designated shooter. That's exactly what he's planned to do. The first one was blocked, but this one paid off. 27 to 16. Johnny Harrell in the air, finds Panaco. Here's Banks open. Way down by Wolf. Well, North Carolina is back in control, trailing by 13. Or trailing by 11. The thing that's going to make it tough for North Carolina to come back is the defense of uh, Duke's playing. They're all back. There goes O'Korn up over Jaminski and uh, racing them. The ball is Bernard out to Jaminski. Duke's got the ball. Boy, you don't see that often. He took three dribbles. Spinarco and traffic throws it out to Jaminski. I've never seen it before, but three seconds. No, they're calling a double dribble. A double dribble on Spinarco. I've never seen him roll the ball like that. You know, that's the only way he could get it to him was to roll it on the floor. Absolutely, and he did do that on purpose. I asked Gabe Lemons once if he wanted to hire a basket. He said, no, I want him to pour a hole in the floor and let him roll it in. Then the Chinese could play. <laughs> so Abe would have liked that play, wouldn't he? 
Well, I'll tell you, with the hole in the floor, you'd have to have somebody to bowl well. 37 to 16 the score. Duke's in the lead. Mark Kalana can cut it inside 10 points here. Sometimes a big item. The ball is off the foot of Pendle, out of bounds. Hank Nichols is very precise in his call over there. Mark Kalana will put it back in play. He's got Jimmy Black in there now. Got some quickness. Pretty good shooter. Good defensive player. Here he is from New York City. Freshman. And now Virgil open again. Boy, he can fill it up, as you say, Bones. When he gets right. that he put him in there for that purpose. 27 to 18. Psychologically, you get the margin down under 10 points. Sometimes fires up a team. They leave Bender open. Duke's got to play a little keep away now. Bernard beat his man. He forgot. He forgot Al Wood was behind him. Jaminski really wants the ball. Down the middle, Spinarco. Great play. That Spinarco is unbelievable with the way he can change direction, slide behind the man, sneak his way in. 13 points in the second half for Spinarco. 29 to 18. No telling what kind of game he would have had if he'd gone full force all the way. 2-3 zone, Duke sticking with that. North Carolina didn't play for a half, now they are. O'Korn playing two, blocked by Jaminski. And now Wood fires on the return. Rebound is down by Banks. Gene Banks didn't start this game. We've, he's had an injury lately. We thought he might still be filling the effects of it, but he's in now. Spinarco, back door one more time. Unbelievable. Unbelievable how Spinarco has beaten the defense tonight. If we could see that move that he made. He, he, he starts toward the ball and then reverses and goes behind the man. He doesn't know where the ball is, but Spinarco does. And he goes up and makes the basket. Jimmy Spinarco from Jersey City, New Jersey, high school teammate of Michael Corn. They're facing each other here tonight, but Spinarco far and away is winning that duo. He now has 17 points, 15 of them in the second half. Spinarco, as we told you, closing in on four all-time records at Duke University. Three-point play. Nope. 31 to 18, and again, he's got his biggest lead of 13 points, less than five minutes to go. You notice the manner in which Spinarco carries his hands, always ready to make a move. He's got a bend. He doesn't have them outstretched all the time, not all the way. He's got them like the wings of a chicken. Super intelligent ball player. Oh, good catch by Dudley Bradley. Long one by Cole Scott. Here now will come to Banks. As the long pass to Spinarco, oh, tough to catch. Very tough to catch. He has to think about the end line and try to make it over the shoulder. Well, you know, he might as well make the attempt that he made because he'd have gone out of bounds otherwise. Here's the other play. There's Spinarco as he got the pass. Beautiful play. They're going to give him a rest. Spinarco goes out. He's replaced by Vince Taylor, the sparkling freshman from Lexington, Kentucky. He makes a move toward the ball. He goes behind the man. Absolutely to perfection. 31 to 18. Dudley Brown the inside. Now here goes Virgil again. John Virgil sent in to put some firepower in the North Carolina lineup. He's done that, but it may be too late. 31 to 20, Duke by 11. Blue Devils playing with boys and confidence. Vince Taylor driving, banking, and Jaminski's got it for an inside layup. 33 20, Duke hurls the 13 point lead again. Now, three minutes and 50 seconds to go. Looks like they'll have to put the numbers in the hat tomorrow morning, Bones, at 10.30. They'll draw to break this tie. Looks like it's going to be that. North Carolina is very determined to work it on the inside. And it's eating up some precious time. It'll be Cole Scott from outside, finally. 
Goldsky will take the perimeter shot. The others are a little hesitant. 33 22. He cannot hesitate now. The time running out. There's the double team on Vince Taylor to pick on the freshman. Bender comes down and picks to help him out. Inside Jaminski feeds to Denard, and they'll take it back out. They've got to watch Banks. He's a clever passer when he's double teamed. Duke now working on the back door. There goes Denard for layup. And he's fouled. Penny Denard on the baseline. Foul by Yonaker. Could have a three-point play. He got by with that, Jim, simply because they thought he was going to pass off. Now with 2.45 to go, there's timeout on the court for score. Duke 35, North Carolina 22. Some chicken arrives at the store frozen. Some arrives packed in ice. Not always as fresh as it could be. This is the way Holly Farms chicken arrives at the store. Sealed in its own protective Holly pack. As fresh as when it left Holly Farms. And look, it's U.S. grade A. Only one chicken in three carries the grade A shield. So why take chances when you can take home Holly Farms? There is a difference. Carolina cities, Carolina towns, banks in every neighborhood, banks all around. So if we want to be your only bank, we better be a whole lot better than good. In CNB, we want to be the best bank in the Now watch this situation. He does a reverse dribble. This is Denard. Now they're expecting him to pass off. He did not pass off, and Yannicka did his best to block the shot, but Denard put it in the basket, and he's going to the foul line with a foul shot. Chance for three-point play for Kenny Denard. 6'7 sophomore from King, North Carolina. At his season's high this year, 28 points against Long Beach State. Then a ranked team. Once Duke got that lead, they had, they dropped back in that 2-3 uh, zone, and it was absolutely impossible to do anything but shoot over the outside of it. That's hard to win that way. 36 to 22 is the biggest Duke lead of the game. Cole Scott's the only one taking the outside shot. They're trying to set up Virgil with Cole Scott. There's Cole Scott from the right. Rebound will be by Banks, but it's taken away by Wood. Wood now for the corner for North Carolina. Al Wood's eighth point this half. And North Carolina is going to stop the clock here with two minutes and 19 seconds to go. And both, they don't figure they're out of the game. Well, there's time out on the court for score. Duke 36, North Carolina 24. People, people together. Why does Piedmont Airlines have so many different kinds of discount fares? To save you money. We have a lot of fares because so many of you fly to different places at different times for different lengths of stay. If you want to save money the next time you fly, say hello to Piedmont Airlines. Say hello, say hello, hello Piedmont Airlines, say hello. There's a shot you saw just a minute ago. Jaminski blocks the shot, and he comes back to Wolf. Now watch him make his move. And he gets it blocked again by Jaminski. Part of a makeup of an All-American player, Bones, and Jaminski was named All-American first five today by the basketball writers. Full court pressure by North Carolina. They got to go all out here in the final two minutes and 15 seconds, trailing by 12 points. Double teaming the ball leaves the open man. Uh, Duke is a pretty effective team here against double teams. Watch him find the open man. You don't want to hold it. You don't want to hold it. They don't want fouls. They want the clock to run. 
Well, the North Carolina's in pretty good shape because of the slowdown first half, although three players have three fouls apiece. Oh, Cornwood and Yannick. What's Here's that? DeMar. Now, he just keeps the ball. He should hit the first free man he saw. Fouls, they don't need points right now. They need to talk to run. They are on the bonus. So they may have picked out some players to foul. Virgil, Dean Smith using a platoon system. He has certain players in to play defense, and now he wants Virgil back in there, expecting to go on the offense. He brings Dudley Bradley, a defensive specialist, out of the game. That's right. Now he's liable to run Dudley back in once they get back on defense and gets a, if he gets a chance. Now he knows Denard is hitting less than 55% of his free throws this year. They may have picked him out, Bones. They're going to test how much well, he can hit from the line. The only thing, Jim, if he'd gotten rid of the ball right away, it wouldn't have made a difference. They couldn't have fouled him. They could have, but it might have been a two-shot foul. North Carolina, they want to be shooting quickly. That's Al Wood. And they keep it alive. Old Corn puts it up, and now it's tapped up again. Now pulled off by Wolf. Tries to get it up, and he's fouled on the play. Personal foul by Johnny Harrell. Well, that's the best flurry of the ball game on the boards by North Carolina. Number 22, Johnny Harrell. They went Burrell. after it. You can watch them right here. As you see, Old Corn got the ball off the board and put it up. It was partially blocked. It was batted one time. And then Wolf got the ball. And now he starts up, and you're going to see Johnny Harrell as he makes a move there. He looked like that little piece of that ball, but he got a piece of hand, too. Dudley Bradley, the defensive plus specialist, is back in. He's in replacing uh, Virgil. And now Banks comes back in for Duke, replacing Harrell. They got a Harrell in for quickness on defense. They want Banks in for rebounding here. And now Bradley's back in to play defense for North Carolina. A one and one to Wolf. Everything crucial here now for North Carolina. Oh, he gets two. Okay, if it makes another clean one like that, they're going to call timeout again. That was pure, huh? Pure. There it is. They do not stop they the clock. They did not call timeout. And there's the long pass to Denard. Good catch. He lost it out. That will give a turnover to North Carolina. One minute, 41 seconds to go. North Carolina still has three timeouts to call. They're trailing by 10. Now, here's the platoon again. Black and Dudley Bradley, the defensive players, go out. Virgil, the shooter, comes in. Jed Doubt, the shooter, comes in. Now, the clock doesn't start until somebody touches it. We're now with a minute 35 to go, and North Carolina in dire straits. They're trailing by 10. Jed Doubt gets open. Finally, it hits. Here's the timeout. North Carolina kills the clock as Doubt hits from backcourt, cuts the margin to eight with just 90 seconds to go. And if we hadn't seen so many incredible finishes before, boys, we'd say maybe this one's over. But there's a long time to go. Well, I'll tell you, Jim, the situation they're in, they have the one choice. And that was what Doubt did just a minute ago. He kept uh, turning and pivoting, and they thought he was going to pass the ball, and of course, he put it up. But they have very little chance now. But we remember a year when Duke had an eight-point lead with 17 seconds to go and right. lost the ball game. And they kept calling timeout just like they're doing now. They kept getting the inbounds pass, and Walter Davis is sitting on the bench down there. There's a guy that tore it up from the outside. And now they have a minute and 30 seconds to go, and they're trailing by eight. Well, let's note a couple of things here, Bones. This is a, if Duke wins this game, it'll be the first time since there was a 17 league starting in 1972 that there was a tie for the bye. This will be the first time ever for that. The last time there was a tie for first place was in 1960. Your team was involved in that. Yeah, we were in the tie, and uh, I don't even know whether we won it or lost it. But we didn't win the tournament, I can tell you that. But uh, there's always been a tie for something, another one position. This is 17th straight year we've had a tie for some kind of position and a draw. All right, now the platooning is back in again. If they should get a three-point play here, it would change the complexion of this thing. Uh, they got to hurry, and the foul in backcourt is on Jeff Doughton, and he just fouled the best shooter on the Duke team from the free throw line in Bob Bender. Well, he fouled a bad man to foul. They say that every time we say that a guy's a good foul shooter, he misses. You can see the situation right here. Bender starts to move one way. Now watch Doughton get him as he comes back this way, and Doughton did not have position. He saw him slide his left foot over. That'll send Bob Bender to the free throw line. He's an excellent year at the free throw line. Now John Virgil returns, replacing Dudley Bradley. That's been a switch here for North Carolina. They're in a platooning system. 
Bender's hitting 85.7 percent of his free throws. Had one stretch of over 30 in a row. And he hit. Now he gets the bonus shot. Duke goes back up by nine with 126 remaining. I understand they practice free throws between classes. Well, a rare miss by Bender. 123 to go. Time running out for North Carolina. Al Wood will take a 25 footer, and there's timeout again. Well, they do get timeout. And one official said no, he didn't call it in time. And Hal Grossman said yes, he did. The timeout for North Carolina. Stop the clock with one minute and 16 seconds to go. Now, of course, you must call timeout before the other team takes possession. That's right. All right, there's timeout on the court. The score, Duke 37, North Carolina 30. the night just to get it right now it's all behind got blue ribbon on my mind i've got paps blue ribbon on my mind there are a lot of beers but there's only one pabst it's brewed to be the best naturally with no artificial ingredients and you can taste it i've got paps blue ribbon on my mind well bones in one minute and three seconds duke has picked up five or north carolina has picked up five points they trail by 12 with 219 to go now they're trailing by seven with one minute and 16 seconds to go and that one minute and three seconds taken exactly 11 minutes to play jim you know a minute ago after they made those two foul shots i'll be honest i don't know the rule maybe you can't call timeout after you make a foul shot you can, uh, but you, uh, I don't think he wanted to because the clock wasn't going to start until he got the play inbounds anyway. Or he maybe just wanted to save it. He only has one left. Right. So North Carolina can only stop the clock one more time unless he wants to absorb a technical foul. They called it four. Now there's Bender again, backcourt, being harassed by Dudley Bradley. Bow oh, Jaminski, great feed from Banks. Duke just ripped open the zone. press that time, 39-30, one minute to go, nine-point lead. That may have put it out of play. A charging foul on Bout turns it over for North Carolina, and that could be the one that finally did it. For a long and last, with 58 seconds to go, Duke gets the ball. Blue Devils up 39 to 30. And Duke's going to call timeout, a smart call by Jim Spinarkle, because it was close to having the five-second call. Didn't take any chances. We'd like to take this opportunity to thank Athletic Director Bill Colby, Head Basketball Coach Dean Smith and his staff, and Sports Information Director Rick Brewer from the University of North Carolina for their help in tonight's telecast. And from Duke University, our thanks go to Director of Athletics Tom Butters, Head Basketball Coach Bill Foster and his staff, and Sports Information Director Tom Mickle. Our thanks also to our stage manager, Bob Royster. All right, what's the situation here? Ball's passed to Spinarco. Spinarco passes the ball down to Banks, and Banks turns it to Jaminski, and Jaminski says, oh, baby, mash. As you know, Bones, the Holly Farm Scholarship Award of $1,000 grant is presented to the office of the ACC Commissioner to the school of the outstanding player or players of this game, as chosen by the game announcers. So we'll have our player of the game. There he is. Tonight, the outstanding player of the game is Jim Spinarkle, number 34, from Duke University. Just played an inspired game, especially in the second half, once the action picked up. He's the catalyst of this Duke team. Lot pass in now, stolen by Dudley Bradley, and then booted out of bounds by Jaminski. Boy, Bradley's had almost 90 steals this year. Just had a spectacular defensive year. Now watch him pack that defense in there. Dave Cole Scott comes in replacing Jed Dalton. He's getting North Virgil Carolina back in there. Yep, Virgil's coming in for Bradley since it's North Carolina's ball. They want their offensive platoon back in. Uh, Cole Scott and Virgil, the shooters, are back in there. Going out to Cole Scott. And there's Wood from the outside. Wood hit. There's the final timeout called by North Carolina. The last one they could call without incurring a technical foul. Five timeouts now have been called with 50 seconds to go. North Carolina's cut the margin 
They were trailing by 14 points. They cut it in half, balls down to seven, which is pretty good work. I think they've done. They've done a real good job. You see the huddle down the county. Then here's Spinarco. He sees that he doesn't have enough. Here's the pass that goes in. You see that it's deflected. You see Al Wood get the ball. But the pass goes in to Coyne, and there's a stumble there, and they say North Carolina knocked it out of bounds, and the referee says that Duke knocked it out of bounds. You know who wins that argument? I know who wins it, and they win every single time, <laughs> whether it's Bellow and Ekman or who it might be. Take that from a coach, folks, who knows? Next week, the ACC tournament, one of the great sporting spectacles here every year, Thursday, first round, 1 o'clock, 3 o'clock, and 8 o'clock. On Friday, the semifinal games will be at 7 and 9. Saturday's championship game, 8.30. All on live television. Check your local listings. Well, we can tell you for sure that the 1 o'clock game will be between one of these teams and one of the two you saw this <laughs> afternoon. But well, that's all we can tell you. you. You really told them something, didn't you? That's right. The 3 o'clock game is going to be between the other one of these teams. <laughs> that's right. And the other team you saw this right. afternoon. And whoever else shows up can play the night game. Well, we know the 8 o'clock game is between Maryland and Clemson, boys. We don't right. have to worry about that. Here we go, inbounds play to Jeminski. Jeminski fouled immediately by Old Corn. There were two players named first team All America today. Mike Old Corn been held out at just two points. Only two free throws in this game, but that was dictated by North Carolina's first half strategy. Kenny Denard returns to the Duke lineup, replacing Johnny Harrell, Bob Bender also in there. 48 seconds to go. Mike Jeminski will be on the line for Duke. Mike scored seven points tonight. Jeminski's been out of double figures only one time this year. That was nine points against Virginia. And in danger here tonight. That gives him eight. With 48 seconds to go. Now he needs to bounce it off the front rim and dunk it. He doesn't mind, I'm sure. No. Never mind. 41 32, nine point lead. Here's Al Wood, excellent shooter for North Carolina. Rebound, Jaminski. And Jaminski fouled and backcourt by Al Wood. And a technical foul has been called. Wood goes down. Oh, he took quite a blow, but I think it was all accidental, Bo. Uh, I didn't see the movement that uh, that strong. I did see him make a move and to throw your elbows is a technical foul, but I think they're handling this thing real well out on the court. I think they did a real good job. Banks did a good job. He well, just jumped between Kaminsky and the rest of them. Well, both coaches have come on the floor to keep their own players off of it. That's right. Bill Foster and Dean Smith out there very quickly because in the heat of the battle here, of course, uh, tempers can fly. But that will look to me like an accidental elbow that Jaminski caught Woods, if that's exactly what it was. I'm not sure that it all happened so suddenly. But I'll tell you, Woods went down, didn't he? He's hurt. Al Wood, let's see if we can see it again. Right, here, here's the move. Watch Jaminski get the ball off the board. Now he makes his move. He's got the ball, and no one's after him. Now that, now over the top, there was the elbow on the jaw. And he had his back to him, boys. That's I don't right. think he, he really not, saw it. He didn't know he was back there. Well, that was some blow. That Jaminski is a big fellow. Six it was a, a natural reflex. I know that it I know that it hurt. I know that it's a foul to do a thing like that. Six foot eleven, 200, 245 pounds. So it's it's gonna be a, a personal foul on Al Wood. And then a technical foul on Jaminski, which is also a ejection from the game. So Jaminski is out of the ball game. It's going to be a false double foul. Wood if, uh, will have some free throws coming. And Jaminski, well, he's out of the game. I don't know who will shoot for him. 30 seconds to go in the game, and Wood now is setting up. Fans giving him a round of applause. I think it's great that this, I just wanted to say that. I got to the great part, and I wanted him to know that I meant that the Duke oh, crowd look, is giving oh, him a great hand. Look who's going out now to check and see how Wood is. He wants to talk to Coach Dean Smith. Zeminski is telling him he didn't do it on purpose. He <laughs> couldn't have. He didn't see him. Oh, that was Zeminski. That was a pretty good gesture by Mike Zeminski. 
Went out to check. Yeah, the, I uh, think it hurt Jaminski. I really think he's crying. Uh, he's a great young man. Al Wood sitting up now, so things looking better for him. But you saw Jaminski, he was behind Jaminski trying to rip the ball away. Jaminski had his back to him and trying to free himself. The elbow caught Wood in the jaw. Well, the officials ruled it intentional, at least, because they've given Jaminski an ejection technical. Well, Al Wood had a piece of that ball at one time and did not and was not committing a foul. He did foul him. But then Jaminski trying to get free through the arm, and of course that's a technical whether you touch anybody or not. Or it's, it's a foul. Now Bill Foster can choose anybody he wants off the bench here to come in and shoot the one and one. He's going to send he's going to send Gray in there if he sends the man he usually sends. That's, that's who it is. It'll be Gray. Gray will go in. He's an excellent shooter. Matter of fact, his free throw percentage, 82 percent on the season, is second only to Bender. Scott Getz says at 90 percent, but he's only taken 10 shots, nine out of 10. So here is uh, Steve Gray in for the one and one. This is in place of Jaminski, who's been ejected. Just a moment. Nobody down there because there's going to be some more free throwing at the other end. That was a shot there. Okay, now we'll go to the other end. And we can have anybody shoot the technical free throws here. There'll be two of them. Intentional technical. Flagrant foul. And Michael Corn will shoot the double technical. So one then the players have shown a lot of cool at the free throw line balls. Well, but now with only 30 seconds to go, they've got to keep the cool. Any scuffle now could cause something that shouldn't be called. All right, it's going to be North Carolina's ball at midcourt. It's a false double foul. Ordinarily would be a jump ball, but there are no jump balls in the Atlantic Coast Conference after the opening tip. They rotate team possession from one team to the other, and it's North Carolina's turn to get the ball. 30 seconds to go, nine-point lead by Duke. We have now taken 23 minutes to play less than two minutes. Jed Doughton at the top of the circle. Doughton hitting. North Carolina cannot kill the clock. And there's a foul, a technical foul on the play. A call against Yannicka. Yannicka, that might have been on purpose, folks, to stop the oh, clock. I think he had to do it to stop the clock. That stops the clock. That means that Duke is going to be able to go to the line and shoot. 24 seconds to go. I tell you, these teams don't give up till it's all over, do they? Not at all. Watch the shot. Dalton puts it up. It goes in. Here's gets after the ball, and you see what happens right there. He was fouled. <laughs> I thought O'Corn got him, but then I thought they called it on Yannicka. After the shot, a foul on Yannicka, technical foul. And Bob Bender will shoot the technical free throw, and then North Carolina. It seems to me that North Carolina would have been better to wait and commit a personal foul. Right. Because now Duke gets the ball. That's right. One shot to Bender. Should have let him throw the ball in. Eight point lead, 44 36. 24 seconds to go. Bernard back in for Duke. Now North Carolina. They're going to send it. They're huddling here off the technical foul. They didn't have a timeout left, but Dean Smith taking advantage of the technical. Right. He comes out with Virgil, Doubt, Cole Scott, Yannick, and O'Corn. Uh, Dudley Bradley's coming out because he's out replacing out. 24 seconds to go. Eight point lead by Duke. North Carolina making the best game it can of it right here is Johnny Harrell. Now time, there's the foul. Doubt and fouling Harrell. Believe, they're going to call it close now, Jim. They're not going to let the contact go on because that's all it'll take to ignite something. Well, uh, North Carolina's intent now is to foul quickly because they must stop the clock. One thing's certain, if they don't foul, the game's over, they're lost, right? They're probably going to lose anyway, but but you got to take a chance. They don't know whether Harold can shoot these baskets or not. He did last year in the NCAA, I can tell you that. Yep, he certainly did. It's the one and one for Johnny Harold. He's a knuckleball shooter. Knuckleballs do all right. 
Doesn't make any difference whether it spins or not as long as it goes in. I think Foster tried to change him, but he couldn't shoot Foster's way, so he said, go back to your own. Ball is shot, floats it right in there, 46-36. Ten point lead with 20 seconds to go now. Time running out for North Carolina. Here goes John Virgil penetrating and backing the ball home. Virgil scored by 13 seconds, and North Carolina is going to take a technical take foul. They're taking a purposeful technical foul by calling a six timeout with 11 seconds to go. And once more, Bones, if they don't do it, they know the game's over. Well, they're trying to steal that ball in bounds. Want to get a three-point play, but if you notice the last shot that was taken, no one contested the man shooting the ball. North Carolina calls a technical foul. The only way they have left to stop the clock with only 11 seconds to go. They're going to let Bob Bender shoot again, hoping that he'll, maybe he'll miss and he can steal the inbounds play. Now, Jim, with a score of 46 to 38 with 11 seconds to go, we're going to wonder the rest of our lives. If they had played the first half, what would Carolina's chances have been? Folks, we hope you've enjoyed our doubleheader tonight. <laughs> Seven to nothing in the opening game. The second one's been a little bit different. Our player of the game, Jim Spinarco, has the Holly Farm Award, and Duke University gets the $1,000 scholarship. Spinarco led all score with 17 points, and this is final home game for Duke University. He's the only senior that uh, plays in the starting five for Duke. Jim, we're talking about All-Americans in O'Corn and also in Jaminski. Any All-American team pick without Spinarco on it, so far as I'm concerned, there's no need to pick it. Bob Bender, technical free throw. Now Duke gets the ball. Duke's ball at midcourt with 11 seconds to go. North Carolina, very uh, adept team here, preventing the inbounds pass. Robin and Dunar, the clock has stopped now, starting with eight seconds to go. Stolen by Doubt. Down four. Here's O'Corn coming down on Spinacole. Let him go. Corn goes in to score. And that's it. It is all over. Duke University has won the game 47 to 40 and tied for the Atlantic Coast Conference Championship with North Carolina. They'll have to break the tie tomorrow morning at 10.30 by drawing out of a hat. And what an important draw that'll be, Bones. What a draw it'll be, you know. It'll take me until late tomorrow night to find out. I hope they'll put that thing on every radio and run it along every television. It's 40 to 47 in favor of Duke, and it ended seven to nothing at the half. They played the second half even. And I say again, what would have happened if North Carolina had come out and played? A 40-40 standoff in the second half after a 7-0, rather dull first half. There's Jimmy Spinarkle, our player of the game, getting a hero's uh, send-off here, and goodbye from the Duke fans. In his last home game, leaves the floor with tears in his eyes. He was the top scorer with 17 points as North Carolina and Duke end up in a dead heat for the Atlantic Coast Conference regular season run and now the draw will be made tomorrow for the bye for the coming tournament. Well that's it tonight from Cameron Indoor Stadium in Durham, North Carolina. This is Jim Tucker with Bones McKinney. It's been an exciting windup after a rather slow first half. The final Duke's up 47 North Carolina 40. <laughs>
long ago in the little town of Kiern, Germany, to herald the approach of spring, the first Stroh's Bach beer was served. It was a hearty, dark beer, specially blended with toasted caramel malts. Oh. And the people loved their Bach beer. Today, Stroh still makes real Bach beer to herald the approach of spring. I didn't come here for this jive story. I mean, I came here for a Bach, man. <laughs> Winter driving calls for STP products for roses. Try the all-season motor oil from STP, now just 77 cents a quart. An STP single oil filter gives a good start on clean oil, now only $1.88. For extra car care, add STP oil or gas treatment, your choice 99 cents. STP air filters help keep engine air clean, just $2.22. Look to roses for STP car care products. Why do I attend Friends of the College Concert Series? Because I can see super shows, hear great music, enjoy culture, and I don't have to change out of my jeans to do it. I like to go to the Friends of the College Concert Series because I really do like classical music, ballet, and opera. I can see it all with a series membership. Friends of the College Concert Series? Because season tickets only cost $10. With a bargain like that, I can buy two. One